we're but a frightened nanosecond. Yes, Nature is timeless. Yes, what the hell is going on? Yes, I love you all. Yes, we love you too, sir. Any questions? Is this bergamot I'm getting, chef? Yes, it is. Action! Is it just me, or does anyone else think foodie culture is getting a little out of control? They used to say the first bite of any meal is with the eyes, but these days that first bite is taken by your phone's camera. And you're lucky if your meal is even still hot by the time you've composed the pic and posted it on the gram. It's one of his classics. Even worse are the hardcore foodies who talk incessantly about something called mouthfeel. Please don't say mouthfeel. Which is kind of gross when you think about it, and use the word protein instead of meat because they think it makes them sound knowledgeable. In fact, these people are obsessed with chef jargon and can wax lyrical about sous vide for hours. Yes, chef! They're even more obsessed with the chefs themselves, who they consider somewhere between a rock star and the second coming of Christ, even if JC's signature dish of loaves and fishes probably wouldn't be worthy of the gram these days. Of course, the chefs aren't completely innocent here, and there's a real fear menus are becoming so wanky some cooks might actually disappear up their own backsides, which gives a whole new meaning to nose-to-tail dining. He's not just a chef, he's a storyteller. Get a load of these dishes, as described by the menu, thanks Alex, of one of the world's best restaurants, and I'm not making this up, dried flowers and dried apple, sea buckthorn, heather and moss. Green egg. Seriously, what the actual f But if revenge is a dish best served cold, then satire is best served piping hot and overly acidic, which is precisely how Succession director Mike Mylod has plated up his satire of foodie culture in the menu. Get that out of my way. It's all part of the menu. It's okay. No, we're gonna die today. Yes, we are. Yeah. Those who like their comedy blacker than Squid Ink Linguini will devour Mylod's film, although it may leave a bad taste on the palate for foodies without a sense of humour. Are you crying? <laughs> it's just I find it all very moving. So it's okay that I'm not as into this as you are. Oh my god! And that's because the movie mercilessly skewers this group like an izakaya chef would yakitori chicken hearts. The film's premise is that one of the world's best restaurants, which is situated on a remote island and run by a brilliant but famously reclusive chef, played by Ray Fiennes, is staging an exclusive degustation meal that promises to be the apex of the chef's storied career. Good evening. Welcome to Hawthorne. But all is not as it seems, and this special menu and its increasingly devilish dishes have been specifically tailored to the diners and their personal relationships to each other and the chef. How do they get this? It's not good. There's the tough food critic, played imperiously by Janet McTeer of Ozark fame. We're eating the ocean. We're eating the ocean. There's the actor in the twilight of his career, played by John Leguizamo, and a trio of obnoxious hedge fund bros. You told them it was my birthday? Seemed funny about three hours ago. But perhaps the cruelest satire of all is reserved for the foodie, you know, one of those mouthfeel types, who is played to pathetic perfection by a simpering Nicholas Holt. You have to try the mouthfeel of the mignonette. Now you might be thinking that the aforementioned diners deserve an all-you-can-eat buffet of comeuppance, but there's one who immediately earns our sympathy. That's Margot, the guest of Holt's foodie. 12 customers total. How do they turn a profit? 12.50 a head, that's how. What are we eating, a Rolex? Who was played by Queen's Gambit star Anya Taylor-Joy. Margot isn't wowed by hot cuisine and may initially seem like just garnish in the film. However, by the end of the meal, she's an entire course unto herself. You shouldn't be here tonight. But helping it all come together like a perfectly balanced Burr Blanc is old Ray Fiennes as the head chef, who looks like he's having about as much fun as an actor can have in a role. We now offer you a 45 second head start. Okay, 45 seconds starts now. With the occasional moments of horror thrown in, it is somewhat ironic that the menu is attempting to do to genre films what it's lampooning chefs for doing to cuisine. And this is especially obvious as things get increasingly removed from reality as we approach the bloody conclusion. 
But the film is a great send-up of foodie culture that will surely resonate with the hospo industry and is served with a generous side of social commentary that makes it an interesting companion piece to succession. We harvest, we ferment, we gel. We gel. We gel. The menu gets three and a half stars.